Hi, this is Mark with uh, Walk This Town. And this is my first uh, video post, uh, so bear with me. Just trying to go through the motions and uh, wanted to introduce my regular vlog, uh, just talking about all things to do with walking. I wanted to talk a little bit about how I got into walking and some of the my initial missteps. And I think a lot of them had to do with the, the shoes I was wearing. My metamorphosis into an avid walker came about uh, just a little over two year, years ago, just in the midst of uh, COVID. Um, I, I was going through some like pretty intense cabin fever as many of us were. And um, I thought, you know, just to kind of get out there more and just kind of spend time outdoors and uh, kind of you know, absorbing things, nature bathing, whatever you might want to call it. Um, I just thought I would do uh, more travel on foot than by car or even bicycle. So I thought I would start to, to walk. Got into a really good kind of roll. You know, within two weeks, I was like walking easily at least 10,000 steps a day. But on one unusually, um, I guess, overly ambitious day, I walked almost like all over Toronto, 35,000 steps by the time I got to my friend Jody's house. and. Uh, I sat down and was just having a beer with him and I just noticed that my my shin was like really, really hurting, you know? And um, after I'd finished my beer and went on my way uh, back to my house, which is about five kilometers later, I had a really bad limp and I just really felt this like shooting pain up my, um, my shin. Didn't know what it was. And so basically I was um, convalescing, just kind of recovering for about two weeks, talked to my family physician, and they asked me if I stretched. I said, no, I hate stretching. I think like a lot of people do. Um, I've had arthritis most of my life, so I just feel like this kind of piece of wood that's very um, rigid. So I never liked stretching that much. The other thing she asked me about was like the shoe I was wearing when I did this. Did some research and kind of found out that although, you know, Nike Airs and Adidas are, are good for, you know, like kind of guess the lower price models are good for things like going to the gym and milder walks. Um, epic walks or even running, avid running, those uh, lower priced uh, models of, uh, of shoe were just not what I was looking for. The shoe I was wearing when I actually did, you know, get the shin splint or whatever is this uh, Adidas uh, cap tier. You know, it was like about 130 bucks. Uh, it's listed as a running shoe um, and looks pretty cool. I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of bought it um, and had some good reviews and so forth. But it's just, they were always very hard to get into and they're very tight around the mouth. And I think that might've been part of the problem. So I did some research. I went to the running room and mountain equipment co-op and talked to some, uh, some specialists uh, who deal with uh, running and, and walking. And they had both basically just push me towards three types of shoes. Saucony, um, Asics, and Brooks. And when I heard Brooks, I kind of went, wow, Brooks, I haven't heard that name in a long time. When I was a teenager, I used to wear a Brooks windbreaker and had a Brooks duffel bag, you know, that I bring to school and stuff like that. But I never had any shoes. And I think the the, the brand kind of waned during the, the early 2000s, but as these running specialists were telling me, the um, Brooks shoes, uh, specifically the uh, the Ghost 14, um, were really good shoes and that I should look into those. So I did some more research after visiting with the running room and Mountain Equipment Co-op and um, decided on the uh, Brooks Ghost 14s. So these are the shoes I decided on. The nice thing about Brooks, um, especially the Ghost 14s, they come in a wide array of like colors, um, but also widths. I have inherited my dad's feet, which uh, were a little bit wide, and Brooks actually offered this size. So I got a size 11. They had a different, like I said, palette of colors. I went with the black. Um, these are kind of the colors of a football team I'm not particularly in love with, but I kind of like the look of them. And um, as soon as I put them on, um, you know, this is long after I'd recovered, as soon as I put them on and then actively wore them in the spring of 2022, I just thought I was like walking on marshmallows. Um, just amazing shoe, uh, so much support, easy to put on. Um, and uh, because I was um, starting up dog walking, and walking everywhere instead of um, using my car. Um, I just found these were like so good. These were amazing uh, in every aspect. 
So after the, probably the, over the next uh, 14 to 15 months, I wore these, uh, you know, during um, weather that was a little more forgiving. In the winter, I wore a pair of Merrells, which I'll talk about at another time. But during the spring, summer, and fall, before the snow had hit the ground, I wore these um, probably over a million steps over that 14 to 15 month period. And these were amazing. What I noticed about a month and a half ago is um, the shoes started to show some signs of wear. Um, you know, like the, the toe um, cap uh, had developed kind of a little cut there. Um, the tip um, of the shoes on both uh, was showing some wear there. Actually, there's even like a hole emerging there. And, you know, just around the um, where you put your foot in here on both shoes it started to wear so it kind of like prompted me to look at the soles of the shoes and i kind of went wow they like they've really worn down i did some research again and you know like people who are avid runners will typically change their shoes every six months to a year um, so i think these were well overdue for a change so you're wondering maybe after all the research i'd done uh, the first round um, what did i decide on for my next pair so again, um, Saucony, Asics, and, and Brooks were uh, tops in my new um, round of research. Uh, Brooks was now offering the Ghost 15, uh, which still looks you know, beautiful and had the same reviews and, and um, offered the same um, variety in colors and, and sizes and specific sizes and widths. Um, I, I still preferred the Ghost 14s. They had kind of a more boxy, um, look, I, I like boxy things, you know, Mini Coopers, toasters, anything with a little bit more of a profile that are, you know, kind of chunky. And so I searched Ghost 14s again because I just thought, you know, the, why reinvent the wheel? Like these were just so good for me. Um, unfortunately, there was a lot less available online. Brooks really didn't carry many of the 14s themselves. And some of the uh, stores that sold the 14s uh, when I first purchased, um, almost a year and a half ago um, weren't offering them but I did find some online again the the um, the um, variety was very limited I was able to find uh, the Brooks um, 14s double D and maybe you're wondering what color I got again well I got the black and um, blue um, color again um, which I, you know, I've worn maybe for about a month now and I'm just so happy with the treads are amazing. I did notice the, the difference immediately when I put these on compared to the old 14. So just kind of reaffirmed how um, overdue I was in, in swapping out uh, my shoes. And I think it's something I'll do on a more regular basis um, going forward. So um, I, again, I'm really happy. Brooks, very nice, they're wide. They're chunky. Um, they've got this nice thick sole, which is more than cos cosmetic. It's packed full of like support and and bounciness, and uh, and it's amazing. So what can I say? I know what I like, and I'm very happy that I got these um, again. So I encourage you, if you can find the Brooks 14s, uh, get them. The 15s, like I said, are also good. Uh, I think Brooks has another line of shoe called the Glycerin, which is apparently really good as well, which looks nice. Um, um, Any way you look, uh, I, I think you can't go wrong. Just don't go cheap on shoes with your cheap Adidas or Nikes. Uh, definitely going with something that's a little more um, pricey um, will give you better benefit and, and really treat your feet, your shins, your lower body um, much better than like those cheap versions. So good luck and uh, tune in for my next post. Uh, we'll be talking about the performance socks that I wear with these shoes um, and other shoes when I'm walking, when I'm dog walking, when I'm doing my epic walks. Um, they, almost as much as the shoes, are very important and uh, I'll spend some time talking about those because I've got a lot to say about these performance socks that I've been wearing. Thanks very much and tune in again. If you like the video, please click below and subscribe as well and I'll share future videos with you um, about important topics relating to walking, um, apparel, uh, places, you name it. That's my goal. Thanks.